Lesson 3.5 deals with one of the types of transactions that an investor might want to engage in uh, with regard to purchasing stock, uh, that of margin buying. In this lesson, we'll go through uh, the characteristics of a margin buy, why an investor would want to engage in a margin buy, and uh, the method of calculating uh, the margin payment that is required from the investor in order to initiate and maintain a margin transaction. So first we'll talk about what a margin buy is. Basically when an investor engages in margin buying they are borrowing part of the purchase price of the stock purchase from their broker. So if I wanted to purchase 100 shares of ABC Company on margin I wouldn't provide the entire purchase price of the 100 shares, I would put up a certain amount of it and I would borrow the rest from my broker. This type of a transaction is entered into when the investor feels that the price of the stock will increase. The investor is using what we call leverage or borrowing to purchase more shares than they normally could. If the shares of uh, ABC Company are selling for $10 a share and I have only $100 to invest, I could only buy 10 shares if I bought them outright. However, if I invested with my broker in a margin buy, I would be able to borrow additional funds to my $100 and buy more shares. This type of leverage has uh, one main um, effect on, the, on any investment that, where leverage is used, and that is that it accentuates your gains and your losses. Anytime leverage is used, it will allow you to make more money when the market moves in the direction that you anticipate that it will, but it also means that you will lose more money if the market moves in the opposite direction. For this reason, anytime leverage is used, we say that there is more risk involved in the transaction. So we'll start with an example. In, in this example, Leslie wants to buy 400 shares of TD Bank stock on margin. Her broker advises her that the required margin on the purchase is 40% and TD stock is selling at $30 per share. If you move to the next slide, we'll look at the calculations that are done. So the first thing that we're looking at is that Leslie is buying 400 shares of the stock at $30 a share. So in order to facilitate this purchase, $12,000 is needed and will be spent in order to purchase the stock. The broker had it required that a margin of 40% be provided by Leslie. That means that the broker is willing to lend the difference, or 60%. The important thing to realize is that the maximum loan that the broker will have out on this margin buy will be 60% of whatever the market value is. So when the price rises and falls on the stock, this maximum loan amount that the broker is willing to have outstanding will change. The cost to buy never changes because the purchase is enacted at the beginning of the transaction. The shares have been purchased, that's what they cost, and that doesn't change. So in this case, the market value of the stock is $12,000 and the broker is willing to provide 60% of that, so $7,200 will be provided by the broker. The difference is required from Leslie in her margin account in order to begin the transaction, so $4,800. Next we'll look at what happens if the price changes. As long as Leslie has this transaction outstanding, she must maintain the required amount of margin in her account to keep this position open. If she wants to close the position, she has to sell the shares and that's where she will recognize her profit or loss. So in this case, the TD stock has fallen to $28 from $30. Leslie still wants to maintain the position and keep the margin buy open, thinking that the price will rebound above the 30. The broker is only willing to have 60% of the market value outstanding in a loan, so now 400 shares times $28 per share is your market value, and 60% of that, $6,720, is the maximum amount of the loan that the broker will have out to Leslie. That means that the broker now requires $5,280 in Leslie's margin account. 
Leslie already put 4800 in when she opened the transaction, so she will receive what we call a margin call for an additional $480. This means that Leslie must place 480 additional dollars in her margin account to keep the margin buy open. If the share price had risen above $30 rather than falling below $30, the result of this calculation would have shown us what we call an excess margin, which means money that is in the margin account that is in addition to what needs to be there. Uh, this means that Leslie could take this amount out of her margin account and use it if she so chooses, keeping in mind that if the price of the shares can t or drops in the other direction, she would then have a margin call to provide more funds.